listeners from multiple locations via the miracle of Skype. It's the LTN Hour. Let's talk NASCAR with your host, Todd Bailing. Co-host, Ed Kaluka, Featuring Dangerous Dan Margetta. And Brian Schmidt. LTN is a caller-driven program, and your participation is encouraged by calling 414-421-7901. That's 414-421-7901. Now, the creator and host of the Fastest Hour in Radio, Todd Bailing. Come on back from Arizona, they said. It's springtime in Wisconsin, they said. It's beautiful. It's 80 degrees, they said. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the program. Sure. Amiable host Todd Bailing coming to you live from the scoring tower at Dell's Raceway Park, where Jerry Alby has been nice enough to offer the Wi Fi to me while we are up at our cabin. I will tell you on my way over here, it was 36 degrees on my car thermometer and snowing. Snowing. What the hell is going on? Are we going to get global warming pretty soon? Somebody go ask Al Gore when the hell it's going to start. Two weeks ago it happened. Uh, Well, I can tell you that uh, the the staff here at Dell's Raceway Park tried to get their opener in yesterday. Imagine they had every intent, even though it was 43 degrees, even though the wind was blowing, even though it was damp and crappy, they had every intention of getting this thing underway and when it was time to qualify, it started drizzling, and they could not get it to stop. It just it just kept uh, the track to the point where they couldn't get on it, and they finally had to cancel. So the opener for the Dells is is this coming Saturday night. It's going to be the first night for the UMA Super Late Models, a 50-lap feature. Thanks to Jerry for letting – he even left the furnace on for me in this place. Can you imagine that? Thank you. Now then, we're racing at Dover, but not today. No, 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 no. By the way, my three partners, who you may have heard from already, starting with Ed Kaluka of West Bend, Wisconsin, who was not on this program last week because, Ed? I was was in the hospital. What is it? Well, I had uh, water in my lungs. And it's the same thing I had before. And I got to the point where I had a hard time breathing. I couldn't talk. It was, it was terrible. Oh, so I went into the emergency room in St. Luke's and uh, started the process, which took four long days. Oh, oh Ed, my God, I was miserable. Did you? You weren't in St. Luke's. You were in Hartford, weren't you? No. You, oh, you were in Milwaukee. I didn't know that. Yeah, it was in St. Luke's in Milwaukee. I'll be done. Well, I went, to, I went to Hartford, and they said, we can't help you here. you got to get to St. Luke's because you you got some problems we can't handle. Oh, my God. So, yeah, so they transferred me. They're going to transfer me by ambulance. And I said, no, my daughter will take me. It was $1,600 for the ambulance. Oh, good God. Said, That's okay. I'll take, my, I'll take it over. So, yeah. <laughs> so I went over there, and I checked in, and the process started. And was, four days uh, you were in the hospital. Yeah, it was uh, <clears throat> unbelievable. <laughs> I I feel sorry for Dan when he was in there. I feel sorry for anybody who's in there at all. That's the most terrible place you can be. Wait a minute. Is in a hospital. Oh, in any hospital, not just any the- hospital. <clears throat> yeah, I would oh hate to God. be your nurse, Ed. I got to admit that that that, that, that doesn't be <laughs> thing I'd want to do. But, What's uh, that? Get that bedpan over here. <clears throat> um, so what's the, what's the prognosis? Are you going to have something done? Yeah, I have to have a, a ref, uh, defibrillator put in my chest, hmm. which is a device that is, controls your heart electricity-wise. And when you start to have a problem, it automatically kicks the heart back to normal, which I did in the past with nitrostat. I'd take nitrostats, and that would do the same thing. But this will be an automatic deal, and it won't like get out of control. Is that like so. a pacemaker or something? Yes, it is a pacemaker. Yes. All right. Very good. Well, 
Pacemaker, defibrillator, same same device. Okay. All right. Yeah, so I got to uh, get that installed next week, and then I'm good to go. And, Ed, as we all have uh, been reminded a couple of times, you're not exactly a spring chicken anymore. How old are you? 84. 84, and they're doing all this to you. Well, we're uh, we're certainly uh, got our fingers crossed for you, and you uh, <laughs> take it easy on them nurses, and you, you'll be <laughs> already good to go. You sound fine. <clears throat> Now, now that we're doing the health ward, Dan Margetta, who is, uh, you know, currently undergoing chemotherapy, he's joining us. Hi, Dan. Hey, I'm doing okay. Round two is coming up Thursday. Hair's falling out a little faster than it was before, but uh, other than that, we're doing okay. And if round two goes fine, I'll be in Madison next week. Oh, Everybody man. was crying about, uh, you know, why we're running. It was 40 degrees and no rain at Slinger last week, and now you know why, because it's raining today. So, Yeah. Yeah, crappy all the way around. Brian Schmidt of Ootsburg, Wisconsin, who was last time I checked, is uh, there's nothing wrong with you, is there? No, I'm just fat, but other than that, I'm okay. <laughs> oh, come <laughs> no. on, Brian. But for those people that complain about the weather here, it can always be worse. Because I watched the weather this morning, and in like northern Wisconsin and the UP, they're going to get one to two feet of snow today and tomorrow. So it's always worse somewhere else. Feet, not inches. Feet. Listen, it's the 30th of April. The last day of April. <clears throat> when does spring start in these parts? June. June, July. Unbelievable. Gets and, pretty nice in August. And if you noticed, it's been warmer later in the year, too. It's kind of like the whole thing is shifting a little bit. But, you know, that meteorology class will be some other time. But we're glad you joined us. And if you'd like to... to uh, Join in with us, whether you're in the hospital or home safely resting. You can call us at 414-421-7901, and we'll take your call about pretty much anything having to do with the world of racing. Uh, we mentioned Dover, Delaware today. It's raining. It's not going to stop raining. The race has been postponed till tomorrow morning. Coverage here on the Big 920 on our website, Twitter page, and Facebook page begins at 10 o'clock in the morning, and the race is approximately 11 o'clock, will be televised on FS1 tomorrow. You see how much uh, bad luck they've had at Dover? How... Oh, yeah, and they changed the date, didn't they? Wasn't yeah. it all in June? Yeah, here's what happened. 2019, they ran the race on Monday, rained out. 2020, they got caught by the COVID deal, got messed up. 2021, they actually got it off. 2022, ran on Monday. 2023, run on Monday again. So three out of the last four races have been pushed to Monday on them. Now, we didn't really have that problem when they raced there in June. Uh, do you suppose their schedule makers have noticed this? We have to remember that changed hands, too, about the time all this started, because Dover used to be their own property. <clears throat> they were their own company. They owned three different tracks, Dover, Memphis, Nashville. And when Speedway Motorsports acquired the Nashville facility to open that back up and run a race, Part of the deal was buying Dover and Memphis along with it. They also had St. Louis back in the day, but the Bomberito Group bought St. Louis. So moving their dates was with Speedway Motorsports purchasing the property, and that's why they went from two races, June and September, to only the one race they have now. So I think in order to coordinate the dates the way they are, that's why this date is back over here. So Speedway Motorsports is pretty much responsible for the date they have. And as you remember, Speedway Motorsports is Charlotte, uh, in Vegas, Texas. Do they Texas. that anymore? Texas, yeah. And, and Atlanta, Bristol. Bristol. Yeah, so uh, it's big, big companies. This is this is publicly straight, uh, traded stock in Speedway Motorsports, you know. You can always tell what race is on by the radio broadcast. Is PRN is brought to you by... Yes, Performance Racing Network is wholly owned by Speedway Motorsports. It's the same one as the Charlotte Group, so... Uh, and then uh, MRN, of course, NASCAR is on the Daytona group. So there you have that. Uh, what's happening? Last week we raced at Talladega. Kyle Busch won the race after the Bubba Blaney incident on the last lap, which is just a product of the racing at Talladega. I really don't think anybody uh, is specifically... Um, blamable in that last in any of those last laps you do oh you you're wrong todd i don't know that, that see it's that, that 23 car he blocked once he didn't do anything he blocked twice didn't right. do anything the third time he said that's enough you're going 
Yeah, and and he knew it. Uh, Bubba didn't blame anybody. It's just that if you're going to have a shot to win, you have to keep blocking. And, you know, mirror driving is, is uh, unfortunately, it's a part of our sport. Not is It's not just a mirror. Now we have a TV camera on the back and a spotter to tell you what it is you're looking at in the TV camera. It's, it's not. It's <laughs> mirror driving has taken a whole new look. We'll sneak away and I'll adjust my mirror right after this. Buckle up, get ready, get set, and get your tickets now as the NASCAR Xfinity Series returns to Wisconsin's Road America in Elkhart Lake, July 27th through the 29th. The smell of fresh rubber and food will fill the air for this weekend, along with the Porsche Carrera Cup for even more racing fun. An amazing, affordable weekend of family fun with camping, food, and more. Get 16 and under, get in free with paid adult. Come for the experience, stay for the race. Get your tickets today at RoadAmerica.com. Your national park of speed from racing engines to street engines long blocks to turnkey packages or complete custom engines just ask and wagner automotive can fill your needs all backed by many years of racing experience these years of experience have provided reliability and performance that customers need to win races wagner's has been building championship winning engines for top teams from nascar to short tracks in your backyard this expertise has carried over to street engines they supply to top custom car builders the wagner company in the heart of wisconsin is outfitted with the state-of-the-art machinery necessary to design, manufacture, build, and test custom engines and their accessory parts. Dyno services are independently available for anyone needed to test their engine. Wagner's company can also provide you or your company with production CNC machining or welding services. All your questions and requests are handled personally by Casey Wagner. Just give us a call at 920-394-3557 or visit our website at at WagnerAutomotive.com. National Super League Model Racing returns to MIS Sunday afternoon, May 7th for the Joe Shear Classic 200. See the ASA Stars National Tour for the first time ever on Wisconsin's fastest half mile. Racing for $15,000 to win. Plus Midwest trucks. Get advanced discount tickets at MISRacing.com. ASA Stars National Tour plus Midwest trucks. It's the Joe Shear Classic 200. The biggest race of the year. Sunday afternoon, May 7th. First race, 2 o'clock. Madison International Speedway. Don't miss it. Spring is in the air, and PMF Landscape Supply in West Bend has everything you need. With fresh mulch arriving daily, from premium hardwood mulch to hemlock and pine bark to enviro mulch in red, gold, chocolate brown, and black colors. PMF also has a large variety of decorative stone and granite, as well as field stone, topsoil, and compost. For all your landscaping needs, visit PMF Landscape Supply, 5470 River Road in West Bend. Call 262-338-8800 or visit pmflandscape.com. Friends of racing for many years. PMF Landscape Supply in West Bend. Shot by Tomasino and he will score. Game two of the Central Division semifinals between the Milwaukee Admirals and Manitoba Moose takes place on Sunday afternoon. Backing right, feeds it left. Afanasia with a wrist. He scores! The Admirals visiting Manitoba for a 2 o'clock faceoff. Pre-game coverage begins at 1.30 on the Big 920 and your iHeartRadio app. Welcome back to LTN. Glad you could join us. To the telephones we go to start this segment with our uh, longtime friend, Greg from Milwaukee. Hi, Greg. Hey, good morning, gentlemen. I uh, hope uh, Eddie hangs in there. I had a similar experience at St. Luke's. I'm on oxygen now 24 hour, 24-7, so uh, I'm glad that he's still mobile and he's going to Turn out just good. Good. Thanks uh, a lot, man. I, I appreciate it. I have a question, two questions for you. Number one, uh, with all the carnage at uh, Talladega, and they keep talking about the expenses both in both series, uh, do you think that the expense will eventually uh, dictate some kind of a rule changes, or is Talladega at all in trouble uh, as far as future races go? And my second question is, um, what's the condition of Kurt Busch and Ernie Irvin? When, did they have uh, similar injuries that affected their racing careers? So I'll listen, and thanks for everything, guys. Uh, Dan, you hang in there, too. 
We appreciate it. Uh, thank you very much for the call. Um, interesting. Uh, you know, <laughs> Talladega rule changes are, they come often, it seems like. There's there's more things that are revolved around Talladega than anything else. Um, to Kind of specifically, we should probably at this point tell you about the concern that is out there about uh, Kyle Larson's wreck. I mean, it was at Talladega, which means it was at higher speed. It had to take a perfect hit for this to happen. But uh, there is great concern in the racing world, uh, in the NASCAR world, about the the car that uh, Kyle Larson had. And that those there were no special bars in that car at, that, uh, at Talladega that there would have been at anywhere else, correct? Oh, and the speeds were down. He hit at about 130 where he could have been hit. He could have hit it at 160. Mm. So he did go in at 130. But, yeah, there isn't much protection on that passenger side. If it would have been the other way around, he'd had all the door bars and everything else to protect him. So we don't know how bad that would be. But either way, it's not good because the front end of those cars are so strong that they're doing all the damage. It used to be if you hit somebody like that with the nose of the car, you would absorb 25 to 30 percent of that crash where it didn't this way with that hard tough nose they got all the energy gets put right into whatever they hit and i don't think they're going to change as far as rules i mean they kept used to messing with aerodynamic rules for the racing that they're not going to lose races at talladega because they're the most popular on tv the fans still have to watch it it's it's still the makes hey, it we're gonna rock at talladega let's turn it on I mean, if, if now as far as cost wise, you start hurting guys. Yeah, that that'll bring that cost up, and maybe it's going to be just driver mentality change. Remember back in '93 when Rusty flipped a couple times and he had enough, and he finally went to the drivers meeting and said, "Hey, I'm tired of flipping. My family's tired of seeing me flipping. You guys got to, you know, get it, get your heads on straight and quit doing stupid stuff like blocking three, four times." Until somebody stands up and does that in a driver's meeting, I don't know if it'll it'll happen. I'm not sure anybody will do it anymore because I think everybody's kind of more on their own deal. They're not they're not collectively as a group. I don't think at least publicly as they were before maybe behind the scenes they are i remember yeah. that one time ernie Irvin got up in front of the whole group and apologized for his driving style yeah yeah and we we could see it at the super speedways both daytona and talladega there are times where those guys can go out there and race 25 30 laps perfectly fine without mm-hmm. having a problem and it can be breathtaking racing i remember dan and i were at xfinity race at daytona several years ago too where they did three quarters of the race it was just outstanding racing they had enough give and take that they could still make the moves that take your breath away but yet not wreck but it's at the very end where they they hit the switch and they just keep wrecking each other and i don't know what it's going to take i mean these cars they, they seem to be getting injured more in these cars than they did before and you thought maybe that would stop some of it and i mean now they're able to race most of the race until something like this happens at the very end but at the very end you still have it racers are racers they're going to do what they got to do to try to get a win and I think it's only going to get worse because so many of these kids have the video game mentality where when they wreck, they don't get hurt. Yeah, and Exactly, Brian. There's an so. unwritten rule that was out there in racing. One of the unwritten ones, if you can avoid a wreck, do it. And they seem to throw that out in the end of these races. And, you know, the winning is, is important, yeah, but is it important to send somebody flipping to the infield? Probably not, you know. And you yeah, can't and I, slow them down either. I mean, people are there for the speed and the excitement, right? Right, right. And, and I listened to an interview this week with Tony uh, – Kenny Wallace interviewed Tony Stewart, and they were talking about the driver etiquette out there. And Tony says the difference these days is back in the day when he was there and when Senior and and Jeff Gordon, all those were there, and you did something like that. You pulled a move at Talladega that would wreck a bunch of people. When the race was over, he'd come and grab you, and you'd go in between the trailers, and he would straighten your butt out. You know, and they don't do that now. These kids go and run into their thing, and they go on their social media, and they just tweet each other, and everybody gets to see it and stuff like that. He says the only way you're going to straighten this stuff back out is if you go face-to-face, and you understand that when you wreck someone like that, he looks you in the eye, and he scares the crap out of you because he said you you just don't do that, or you're going to get it again. And I don't don't know if we're ever going to get back to that point. Him and Kenny didn't seem to think that that would happen again, just the way society is today. But I think that's the only way you're going to get it through their head, you know. It's a uh, mentality, and... You know, it, <clears throat> like like we were saying, people like to tune in to watch Talladega because it's so exciting. Anybody could wreck at any time. Well, is that really that, you know, I would rather see a good close race all the way to the end myself. Caution laps are not fun to watch. Uh, they, <laughs> they're commercial after commercial, to be honest with you. And, uh, you know, you can only watch a certain amount of that and killing time and talking to guys and blah, blah, blah. Let's be racing. We don't need to be playing more of this crap. Unbelievable. Um, We'll get to the other half of uh, Greg's question when we come back. As a growing manufacturing company, 
We needed security solutions. We chose Bonafide because of the services they offer, pricing, and trusted reputation. But it's their outstanding service and support that convinced us we made the right choice with Bonafide. When businesses need security, they contact Bonafide Security Solutions. From locks and alarms to safes and surveillance, we do it all. We are Bonafide. We protect what you value. For your free security survey, call us today or visit bonafidesafe.com. Miller Sales and Service is the Midwest's number one Bravo trailer dealer for customer service and satisfaction. Serving the area since 1939, Miller's is located on the corner of Highway 57 and K in Random Lake. As the Midwest's number one Bravo trailer dealer, Miller's has all kinds of Bravo trailers from 8 feet to 48 feet in stock. They also have a selection of B&B utility and dump trailers, reliable and Chilton open aluminum and steel trailers. With over 50 pre-owned low-mileage cars, trucks, and SUVs, Miller's has just the vehicle you are looking for. Miller's also carries a full line of Alumacraft boats and Manitou pontoon boats, complete with Evinrude outboards. Why not buy from racers who know what racers want and need? With Miller's Sales and Service on the corner of Highway 57 and K in Random Lake. Call Jerry, Tom, or Brad Miller today at 920-994-4358. That's Miller's Sales and Service, 920-994-4358. Because of last week's cancellation, the season opener of racing at the Fair Park in Plymouth will be this Saturday night. Be there to watch the high-powered late models make their first appearance of the season. Joining them, the Wing Sprint Cars, Grand Nationals, and B-Mods. May 20th, the IRA Sprints, Badger Midgets, and our Plymouth Dirt Track Racing MSA Sprints. Adults $15, students ages 12 to 15, 7. Children 11 under, free, if accompanied by an adult. Pits open at 2, grandstand at 4, opening ceremonies at 5. We'll see you there. You know, there's talk about AM radio being removed from cars and trucks. Yeah, that's right. Removing access to the very AM radio stations millions of Americans count on. You know, some people say you don't need radio because, well, you get alerts on your phone. That's hardly the same. Emergency responders and everyday listeners call into stations to provide vital, sometimes life-saving information. You need to make your voice heard. Text AM to 52886. That's 52886. And tell Congress to keep AM radio in all cars and trucks. Oh, that's a thought of that. That's a pretty big deal right there. Yes, do that. All right, now, when uh, we got the call a couple of minutes ago <clears throat> from our uh, friend Greg, uh, the second half of his question had to do with uh, how is Ernie Irvin doing and how is Kurt Busch doing. Now, I happen to know that Ed talks or texts with Ernie Irvin all the time, don't you? Yeah, I do. I was just going to look at his number and call him and see if he'd answer. Oh, uh, that'd be good. Um, he, he's... His mental capacity is pretty good. It's just that, uh, you know, he doesn't race anymore because the guy's, uh, what, in his upper 50s, I think, isn't he? Yeah, he's, he's fine. I mean, he's raced with his son quite a bit now, and he's his son's crew chief, and his son is coming up. So, Jared Irvin yeah. is doing a pretty nice job on the short tracks, too, Dan, I believe, right? Yeah, they're down in Florida, running down there. I mean, yeah, they both had head, head injuries. Ernie's were way worse. I think he had other injuries as well. I mean, Ernie's wrecked. You know, he about died in that wreck, really. I mean, it was a, it was a miracle he survived overnight, and then he was able to come back and race some more after that. I mean, Kurt had uh, a injury as well, and he and he's he's out. Uh, but I think Ernie just had it was way worse. Uh, but it's, the only similarity there is they they both had some kind of a head injury. Um, Ernie didn't back it in the wall. Kurt backed his in the wall. Ernie went up and and just hit the wall um, with the uh, right side of the car between one and two in Michigan. I was at that race when Ernie got, got hurt at that, that practice. It, didn't, it really didn't, I don't say it didn't look bad because it didn't look spectacular. And usually those are the ones that hurt the most because it was a sudden stop. And I just remember everything got real quiet that day at the racetrack, and it was just weird. Then the helicopter took off and knew something was up. And then the rest of that day, you know, was kind of solemn after that because you didn't know how it was going to turn out. Uh, Kurt, that was, go ahead. And that was back in the day before we had all the stuff we have now. That was that was before the, the walls were what they are. That was before the seats, the safety stuff. And that was also before we had the technology we had now to to scan concussions and to realize what concussions are like and, and the effect they have on it. So I think back in, you know, if you if you were to rewind things and both in, both things were to happen at the same time, Kurt probably would have continued to race right after the injury. You know, but right now, with, with what you have now with the with the technology these days, that's why Kurt's sitting out because the, the – and your name come up about how how Jeez. you're feeling. He called her. Yeah. <laughs> Ernie Irvin. Would you, would you uh, 
Would you come on and talk with us? Yeah, fine. Okay, hang on. <laughs> I'll tell you what, let's <laughs> live radio. <laughs> yeah, you talk hey, about Hey, Todd. Let's... Yes, yes. Put the number uh, on the screen for Matt, and he will call him. All right. I'm yeah. already talking to him. Right. Yeah, but I... Good morning, Ernie. Morning. Good God. We'll call him right back, Ed. Tell him we'll call him right back. Okay, Ernie. Yeah. We'll call you right back. Oh, this okay. is good. Uh, Kurt Bush, by the way, has had um, very public um, acknowledgement of his issues. And one of the things, I mean, he can think, he can talk, he can function, uh, but if you'll notice, I mean, he's done uh, television broadcasts, he gets he gets emotional very quickly. And at the Alan Kowicki uh, Awards Banquet uh, last year, he explained that that is one of the the things that he's had to deal with. He'll just bust out crying every once in a while. He's still on the mend. He's still talking about it. Um, Ed, you put that number, type it up if you can do it right here now. Put it up on the chat board, and then Matt will take it off and call Ernie at home, and we'll find out how Ernie Irvin is doing, you know, head-to-head. That'll be perfect. You just don't get that, hey, on uh, Fox or these other major networks. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> just call, no. guys, but no. call Ernie and see what he's doing, you know. Could be in the bathroom for all we know, but we're giving him a call. So um, either way, uh, Kurt is still on the mend. He believes to this day that he is going to race again. And, uh, you know, we all have our fingers crossed that he can do it. He's a hell of a hell of a racer. And, uh, uh, you know, it would be fun to have him back in there now, uh, you know, to get another ride. He is definitely an employee over there of 2311. He's uh, an advisor. He's been helping the, dr- the drivers out that are over there. Uh, he's vested in the company. So it would be for 2311, perhaps that same number 67 car that was at Daytona. Uh, who was the... the uh, Travis Pastrana drove that Pastrano car. Pastrano drove it at Daytona. And the number's I, up. That, yeah, we see it. Uh, if if that happens, that's probably where he would come back and just you know pretty much to 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 come to go full circle and to complete his own uh, journey back to being able to to race again. And I think that's pretty important for uh, Kurt Busch. So again, <clears throat> we are uh, attempting to call Ernie Irvin right now, and we're going to talk to Ernie uh, if not uh, at this break at, during the next one. Either way, uh. Ma- uh Dan Margetta this week, Larry Mack teased the entire world. As we know, uh, Alex Bowman broke his, what, a bone in his back, a a compression vertebrae, uh, a compression fracture in his vertebrae. Uh, Alex Bowman is out again, and Josh Berry is in that car again. But Larry Mack teased a little something about Josh Berry this week said he's got a cup ride for next year and they're going to announce it over 600 weekend so we're trying to figure out where that's going to be um, that'd be a good thing to talk about when we come back after the next break because it looks like we got our special guest oh got him all right ernie's there uh, hi ernie Irvin. welcome back to the program it's been several years since we've had you on uh, your name came up people want to know how you're doing these days well, i'm doing really good we're actually um, in the process of moving about eight miles down the road and it's kind of been a uh, um a lot of work and um, just um, moving a little bit away from all the um, stuff that's happening here in Ocala. Oh, uh, you're living in Ocala, Florida? Yeah, I live in Ocala, Florida. Okay, and uh, so how are you, I mean, how are you doing after all those injuries that you had to sustain while you were racing? I mean, I'm doing good. I mean, I, I, mean, I have no problems and. Um, I mean, I have more more injuries after I got done racing. You know? I mean, I just haven't. I just... So how's your son doing? Uh oh, I got a feeling we lost him. Yeah, we lost him. We'll get. A... I'll tell you what. Let's take a break right now. We'll get him during the break, and when we come back, we'll uh, chat with Ernie Irvin for a few minutes and get a state of the uh, Irvin family. Hang in there. Buckle up. 
Get ready, get set, and get your tickets now as the NASCAR Xfinity Series returns to Wisconsin's Road America in Elkhart Lake, July 27th through the 29th. The smell of fresh rubber and food will fill the air for this weekend, along with the Porsche Carrera Cup for even more racing fun. An amazing, affordable weekend of family fun with camping, food, and more. Get 16 and under, get in free with paid adult. Come for the experience, stay for the race. Get your tickets today at RoadAmerica.com. Your national park of speed. As a growing manufacturing company, we needed security solutions. We chose Bonafide because of the services they offer, pricing, and trusted reputation. But it's their outstanding service and support that convinced us we made the right choice with Bonafide. When businesses need security, they contact Bonafide Security Solutions. From locks and alarms to safes and surveillance, we do it all. We are Bonafide. We protect what you value. For your free security survey, call us today or visit BonafideSafe.com. Because of last week's cancellation, the season opener of racing at the Fair Park in Plymouth will be this Saturday night. Be there to watch the high-powered late models make their first appearance of the season. Joining them, the Wing Sprint Cars, Grand Nationals, and B-Mods. May 20th, the IRA Sprints, Badger Midgets, and our Plymouth Dirt Track Racing MSA Sprints. Adults $15, students ages 12 to 15, 7. Children 11 under, free, if accompanied by an adult. Pits open at 2, grandstand at 4, opening ceremonies at 5. We'll see you there. The perfect podcast for Green Bay Packer fans. Join host Doug Russell for his new podcast, Tales from 1265. A look back at the great moments in Packers history. Episode 2 is called The Run to 13. The improbable, twisting, record-setting story of the 2010 Super Bowl champion Green Bay Packers. Tales from 1265 is presented by Nicolay Law and is available now on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you listen to podcasts. We are fortunate that uh, we have been able to contact Ernie Urban, the uh, great race car driver, one of our all-time favorites, has raced the short tracks in Wisconsin at Slinger and Madison over the years, kind of had his career cut short by injuries, now living in Ocala, Florida, and helping his son Jared's career in a a late model, and uh, Ed was able to get get Ernie last second on a Sunday morning. We're just pinching ourselves we're so fortunate to have him here ernie welcome back and uh we were finding out about how jared's career is coming yeah jared jared's doing real good he's um actually he's um got his pilot license and he's an instructor and he's just doing um a lot of flying trying to get enough hours and he's getting ready to go um down i don't remember where it's south of here and um, you know, they have a, uh, another job um, flying and you know, have a lot more hours. So um, he's just trying to to get the career going. I mean, obviously, we'd love to be racing, but um, it's just so expensive. And we try to do what we can. And um, he's got a lot of talent, but um, we haven't been able to show all, everybody. You certainly had your uh, fun times when you raced up in the state of Wisconsin over the years, as I remember. Um, <laughs> Slinger and Madison, for sure, we, we got to see you race there. And, uh, boy, those were the good old days, weren't they? Oh, they were. I mean, it was just, you know, I remember, you know, Dick Trickle and, um, um, you know, uh, Sauter, um, not Johnny Sauter, but um, what, John, what's, what's the dad's name? Jim, um, Jim Sauter. Yeah, yeah, yeah Jim Sauter. Others, and, you know, and um, a, a lot of them, the, the good people that um, I raced with, and that was just um, names that I could just pop up in the top of my head. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. Uh, we miss seeing you. You know, you, you've been kind of, uh, if it wasn't for Jared, we, we don't even hear your name anymore. Uh, you should be one of those uh, uh, color analysts that they bring in on Fox. That'd be awesome. Did you ever tell them? Well, I mean, I've I've talked to him. I interviewed, and um, with my head injury, it's just kind of been tough. And um, just just because sometimes I'll get lost on what um, subject I'm talking about, and um, I mean, just there's something that they saw that they didn't hire me. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Well, it's all perfect for radio. Trust me, you're good here. <laughs> we love having you, and. Uh... Yeah, it's great. Great to hear your voice again, Ernie. It's been too long. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, Ed Ed's not my phone number, so he's um, I mean, just popped up out of the blue and called me, which is which is fine. <laughs> I enjoy it, and um, um, I, I mean, I I remember Ed years ago, and you know, we're eight racing and um, always you know talking to him at the racetrack. Oh, I sure appreciate that, Ernie. We did have a good good time for the days I was with you. Well, you take yep, care of yourself, yep. and uh, we're going to check in with you every once in a while, Ernie. That'd be good. That'd be good. Ho- hopefully, hopefully you'll be able to um, congratulate me um, and uh, for the for the NASCAR Hall of Fame someday. Oh, sweet! God, we hope so. We're pushing that for you. Awesome? Yeah, yeah, that'd yep. be awesome. Well, all right. I'm, I'm very well, fortunate. I was, I was very fortunate. I was one of NASCAR's 50 greatest. So that that was good. And now they got the 75th. Um, year of NASCAR. So yeah, and they're I mean, expanding I, I, the list too. Now they're letting anybody in the damn thing. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that, but yeah, just kidding, uh, just kidding. Again, great to hear your voice, and we're going to talk to you in okay. the in the future, Ernie. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Bye. All right. Ernie Irvin from Ocala, Florida, where he's uh, working <laughs> with his son. Isn't that, that's something. Yeah, this racing thing is so expensive. I don't know if we can do it. So instead, we're going to fly airplanes. I didn't think that was all that cheap either. Remember, well, He's got a job, though, flying airplanes. Oh. Fly somebody else's airplane. That's what you do. Yes. Yeah, there you go. Remember when he ran Madison back in the day, and we were all bowling at, at the bowling alley after the rain out, and we were having a good time, and uh-huh. he was driving the Kodak car. And then one guy kept taking pictures, and they're like, "Come on, yes. we're just having here to have a good time." This is this is kind of off the record stuff, and the guy wouldn't stop. So he's like, "Let me see your camera." And he takes the guy's camera, and he pulled the David film back then; it wasn't digital. Remember, he pulled the film on just what I thought, Fuji film, and gave it back to that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Exposed the whole role. Here, put this in your Fuji. That's excellent. Yeah, Ernie was that kind of guy. Boy, uh, I went to the bowling alley there in uh, Stoughton, Wisconsin, and uh, did it. Wasn't he part of the group when Davy Allison died that weekend? I don't yes. remember. If that was yes. part. Of, that was uh, uh, Dale Jarrett was there, and yep. uh, Michael. We're all we all staying in the same motel, Madison. Uh, okay, all right. Um, yeah, uh, I'm trying to think. Who else was there? But that was. Yeah, it was a pretty tough, tough day for a lot of us in the racing business. And uh, that, to see those drivers uh, and how affected they were by the whole thing was pretty crazy. So, Hard to believe uh, his last race was in 1999 at Watkins Glen. I mean, think about how long ago that is. <laughs> I mean, that's crazy. 24 years already. Yeah, it just seems like yesterday. It's amazing. Um, you and Ernie uh, pissed off Alan Kowicki pretty bad, if I can remember right. Uh, you said something to him that made him pretty mad, and you were teasing him or something. Weren't you at a thing at the – never mind. Uh, Don't want to go there. Yeah, probably, probably already passed it. And now, I remember yeah. at Vegas at the odds in that four-car drop, remember, on a bet. Oh, yeah, he was standing in line. He, he, he yeah, put- I, was, I was talking to him, and I said, look at the odds in there. He says, I can change that. He went up, I bet, 2000 or $3,000. On himself? Dropped the odds on him. I don't think you can do that anymore, can you? <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> that's not even, uh, that, that's what got Pete Rose in trouble doing that stuff. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think that's going to. Good. <clears throat> Either way, Alex Bowman gets hurt this week. We didn't get into it too much. In a, uh, was it a sprint car, Brian? Yep, it's 410 sprint car Tuesday night at the High Limits race. Uh, the series that uh, Kyle Larson and Brad Sweet put on, he had a pretty wicked flip. Actually, his flip wasn't as bad as the guy he tangled with, um, but it's just how you land. In a sprint car, if you land on all fours, sometimes that shock just goes up the seat and right into your back, and I think that's what, what happened. You could kind of tell when he got out of the car, he's walking a little gingerly, and um, good thing he's yeah. young. It'll heal up. To do that when you break your back, I guess, but uh, either way, he's out. But they're saying three to four weeks. Really? It seemed like broken back used to be a longer time off than that. Well, it's a compression fracture. That's different than, you know, snapping your back, which would kill you. But, I mean, it's more of a compression fracture, so it just needs to heal, and the swelling needs to go down, and, and then it, it should be good. It's really not a whole lot. I mean, I'm sure he's got, like, a brace he's got on to keep himself a little straighter. We had a guy at work that got injured very similar to that a couple weeks back, and he's been walking around with it, too. It's just it's more of an achy type of a pain. Uh, but you gotta you got to let it heal up before you get hit again. 
And that's yeah, especially any nowadays, stuff cars, that's the problem. Yeah. Nowadays, anything with a back is called a broken back. Yeah, yeah, there you go. And that's how that works. We're glad you tuned in. We've got some results for you, even though it seems like it just doesn't stop raining. But we'll give those to you when we come back. Miller Sales and Service is the Midwest's number one Bravo trailer dealer for customer service and satisfaction. Serving the area since 1939, Miller's is located on the corner of Highway 57 and K in Random Lake. As the Midwest's number one Bravo trailer dealer, Miller's has all kinds of Bravo trailers from 8 feet to 48 feet in stock. They also have a selection of B&B utility and dump trailers, reliable and Chilton open aluminum and steel trailers. With over 50 pre-owned low mileage cars, trucks, and SUVs, Miller's has just the vehicle you are looking for. Miller's also carries a full line of Alumacraft boats and Manitou pontoon boats, complete with Evinrude outboards. Why not buy from racers who know what racers want and need? With Miller's sales and service on the corner of Highway 57 and K in Random Lake. Call Jerry, Tom, or Brad Miller today at 920-994-4358. That's Miller's Sales and Service, 920-994-4358. Buckle up, get ready, get set, and get your tickets now as the NASCAR Xfinity Series returns to Wisconsin's Road America in Elkhart Lake, July 27th through the 29th. The smell of fresh rubber and food will fill the air for this weekend, along with the Porsche Carrera Cup for even more racing fun. An amazing, affordable weekend of family fun with camping, food, and more. Get 16 and under, get in free with paid adult. Come for the experience, stay for the race. Get your tickets today at RoadAmerica.com. Your national park of speed. Spring is in the air and PMF Landscape Supply in West Bend has everything you need with fresh mulch arriving daily from premium hardwood mulch to hemlock and pine bark to enviro mulch in red, gold, chocolate brown, and black colors. PMF also has a large variety of decorative stone and granite as well as field stone, topsoil, and compost. For all your landscaping needs, visit PMF Landscape Supply, 5470 River Road in West Bend. Call 262-338-8800 or visit pmflandscape.com. Friends of racing for many years. PMF Landscape Supply in West Bend. National Super Lake Model Racing returns to MIS Sunday afternoon, May 7th for the Joe Shear Classic 200. See the ASA Stars National Tour for the first time ever on Wisconsin's fastest half mile. Racing for $15,000 to win. Plus Midwest trucks. Get advanced discount tickets at MISRacing.com. ASA Stars National Tour plus Midwest trucks. It's the Joe Shear Classic 200. The biggest race of the year. Sunday afternoon, May 7th. First race, 2 o'clock. Madison International Speedway. Don't miss it! With inflation compensation, you can win a thousand dollars to stretch your wallet. Oh my God. Just keep it here to win $1,000 when you enter the keyword at our website. TheBigNine20.com <laughs> The LTN Hour presents Dirt on the Dirt with Brian Schmidt. A couple tracks were able to dodge the raindrops and get some racing in this week. We'll start Tuesday night in Beaver Dam, their second race of the year. It was a little chilly Tuesday night, but they got it in other, uh, no matter what there. IMCA Modifieds, Brandon Schmidt was your winner in the IMCA Stock Cars. That went to Tim Warner. Down in West Burlington, Iowa, the 34 Raceway, what we were just talking about before, the High Limit Sprint Car Series. Anthony Macri picked up the win in that event. They had a ton of cars there. I think they had like almost 52 cars show up for that event. So huge turnout, two races into that series, and they've been really, really successful. Thursday night in Webster City, Iowa, the Hamilton County Speedway for the USMTS Modifieds. Dan Ebert got the win on Thursday night there. Friday night, Chilton, Wisconsin, Gravity Park Speedway. And the Modifieds, Jesse Cullen was your winner. Grand Nationals, TJ Smith. And the stock cars was Mitch Meyer. Down in Farmer City, Illinois, the UMP Late Models, Taylor Scheffler picked up the win down there. Always good to see a Wisconsin guy go to Illinois and take their money. That's a positive start to his season there. Night number two in Webster City, Iowa, for the USMTS Modifieds, Tom Berry Jr. was your winner. Brownstown, Illinois, the Brownstown Bull Ring for the Mars Dirt Car Late Model Series. Tyler Erb picked up the win. And the UMP Modifieds, that went to Tyler nicely. Eldon, Missouri, the Lake of the Ozark Speedway for the Lucas Oil MLRA Series. Chris Simpson picked up the win. Granite City, Illinois, Friday night for the World of Outlaw NOS Energy Drink Sprint Car Series. David Gravel picked up the win there. Also of note, over the weekend, the Lucas Oil Series once again lost their entire week. They were supposed to race Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. They still have not run in the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series race since February 10th. 
That's unbelievable. They're going to try again next week. Last night, Saturday night, Casa Grande, Arizona, the Central Arizona Raceway, and the late models, John Cornell was your winner. The IMSA Modifieds went to Austin Cool. Todd, Austin Cool got a feature win down. Yeah, there was a full field of cars down there. They had a B main and everything, so that's a solid win for him. The IMSA Stock Cars, Chaz Baca. Fairbury last night, their season opener for the Mars Dirt Car Series. Shannon Babb picked up the win. He's got two wins already this year. He's had a rough couple of years, quietly starting the season real well. So look for big things out of him this season. In the UMP Modifieds, Michael Long was your winner. Night number two in Eldon, Missouri for the Lucas Oil MLRA at the Lake of the Ozark Speedway. Brother Chad Simpson got the win, so the brothers take home all the money. Chris Friday night, Chad Saturday night. Bakersfield, California, the Kern County Raceway Park for the USRA CRA non-wing sprints. Brody Roa picked up the win. And finally in Hopstadt, Indiana, the Tri-State Speedway for the World of Outlaw Nosh Energy Drink Sprint Car Series. Non-wing superstar Brady Bacon beat the Outlaws last night to pick up the win. That track has a knack for getting uh, non-normal Outlaw guys wins, and it continues. Two laps to go. He got got held himself about two laps to go and, and pulled it off and was able to hold him off. That is a big win for Brady. He doesn't do a lot of winged racing, so uh, solid to see him get an outlaw win. That's really cool. So that is everything for this week. And in the world of asphalt racing, of course, last week, the season opener at the Slinger Speedway, the miracle on the high banks, the ASA Midwest Tour. R.J. Braun was your winner, did a great job. Teammates, along with Steve Apel, won two in that one. Uh, did a really super job in the pro late models. Jesse Bernhagen came up and uh, took the money in the modifieds. It was Mike Sandholm, Eddie's buddy, and uh, in the Slinger Bees, Tom Elsinger Jr. Now, uh, uh, the uh, Spring Classic was at uh, uh, Rockford last week, kind of head-to-head with Slinger. They got rained out on Saturday night. They went Sunday straight up against Slinger, the Big 8 Late Model Series. Dale Nottestad was your winner, and in the Mid-Am Series, it was Josh Nelms. They ran Friday uh, the Arkham Menards East Series at Dover, and Jake Finch won his first race, kind of a big deal. Uh, you know, Daddy's Money, that's James Finch's kid. And uh, didn't he always race for the family deal there? What what happened? He, he did up until yesterday. Uh, that race was supposed to be Friday, but it rained out. They ran it yesterday after the Xfinity race, and he showed up in a Venturini car. And amazing how well he performed in the Venturini car yesterday. Very good for him. Well, and, and Saturday, of course, we had our weather in the state of Wisconsin right here at Dell's Raceway Park, where I'm doing this program from. Uh, it uh, was crappy. It was just terrible. But they got it. They got as far as they could, and then it just wouldn't stop raining. The opener will be this coming Saturday night at Jefferson. Uh, Jefferson. The opener was postponed until next Saturday night. Exactly what the decisions will be made will be done during the week. At Marshfield, rained out. The opener is next Saturday night. And at Grundy Speedway, they did get the race in. Imagine that. Blake Brown was your winner in the Super Lates. Dalton Zier was down there and finished third. The Xfinity Series raced yesterday at Dover for the first time ever. Ryan Truex won, not only won it, he kicked everybody's ass, didn't he? It was a pretty impressive performance by Ryan Truex. Yeah, and it's been a while. I mean, this is 188th race. You forget in 2010, he was 18 years old and getting all these opportunities, and he almost won the Dover race in 2012. Leading at the very end, got caught, caught up in lap traffic and got passed. And ever since that time, really never got anything together full time. So it was good to see him kind of get some redemption and get that win. And also on that Arca East race on Saturday, uh, Luke Fenhouse was in that race. He finished third. Finished third from the back, too. He had to start. And because they didn't qualify, it went by points. That's a brand new team he's in. So they had to start at the back. So he had a really fast car. I think starts up front and he's going to run really well in that race. Yeah, but he did well, the best he could with what he was given. It's interesting that you say from the back because you only had to pass 14 cars if you started dead last. Oh, my God, is the ARCA East Series in trouble or what? Yeah, that's why they only have eight races this year, but a lot of them are combined with the National Tour. So when they come to Milwaukee, they're combined with the National Tour. You'll probably have 25 to 30 cars. So, And, of course, uh, by now you know that uh, today's race at Dover has been uh, postponed until tomorrow morning. You will have coverage right here on the Big 920 on our website, our Twitter page, and our Facebook page. Uh, the coverage begins at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. The racing will start at 11, and it will be televised 
on FS1 tomorrow. So Real there. quick, putting a bow tie on the uh, Xfinity race. Sam Mayer was ninth. Uh, Derek Krause finished 20th. He was running up front for a while, and then he had some issues there and ended up 20th. What do you think of his nickname from that team? Sour Krause. Yes. Sour Parker Krause. Retzloff was 17th. Sour Krause. I bet you he don't like it either. We'll be right back. From racing engines to street engines, long blocks to turnkey packages, or complete custom engines, just ask and Wagner Automotive can fill your needs. All backed by many years of racing experience. These years of experience have provided reliability and performance that customers need to win races. Wagner's has been building championship winning engines for top teams from NASCAR to short tracks in your backyard. This expertise has carried over to street engines they supply to top custom car builders. The Wagner Company, in the heart of Wisconsin, is outfitted with the -the state-of-the-art machinery necessary to design, manufacture, build, and test custom engines and their accessory parts. Dyno services are independently available for anyone needed to test their engine. Wagner's company can also provide you or your company with production CNC machining or welding services. All your questions and requests are handled personally by Casey Wagner. Just give us a call at 920-394-3557 or visit our website at Wagner Automotive Buckle up, get ready, get set, and get your tickets now as the NASCAR Xfinity Series returns to Wisconsin's Road America in Elkhart Lake, July 27th through the 29th. The smell of fresh rubber and food will fill the air for this weekend, along with the Porsche Carrera Cup for even more racing fun. An amazing, affordable weekend of family fun with camping, food, and more. Get 16 and under, get in free with paid adult. Come for the experience, stay for the race. Get your tickets today at RoadAmerica.com. Your national park of speed. Because of last week's cancellation, the season opener of racing at the Fair Park in Plymouth will be this Saturday night. Be there to watch the high-powered late models make their first appearance of the season. Joining them, the Wing Sprint Cars, Grand Nationals, and B-Mods. May 20th, the IRA Sprints, Badger Midgets, and our Plymouth Dirt Track Racing MSA Sprints. Adults $15, students ages 12 to 15, 7. Children 11 under, free, if accompanied by an adult. Pits open at 2, grandstand at 4, opening ceremonies at 5. We'll see you there. Shot by Tomasino, and he will score. Game two of the Central Division semifinals between the Milwaukee Admirals and Manitoba Moose takes place on Sunday afternoon. Backing right, feeds it left. Afanasia with a risk. He scores! The Admirals visiting Manitoba for a 2 o'clock faceoff. Pre-game coverage begins at 1.30 on the Big 920 in your iHeartRadio app. And welcome back to the program. There was a press conference at the Milwaukee Mile this week. They announced uh, it's going to be the Clean Harbors 175 for the um, trucks. And at the same day, it's going to be the Arca Sprecher 150. So a a big day that will be on the 27th of August. And it would really be important for everybody to go out, I think, that day and and, uh, show that we can still fill the stands out there, just like the good old days. Why not? It's going to be a good event all the way around. And so... um, uh, I think it's important that everybody. Well, one out. ticket gets you two two races. You know, high noon, one fifty for the uh, the Sprecher one fifty for the Arca series, and then three o'clock for the uh, truck series. So, one price get two full races, a full day of activities. Hopefully, it's really nice out. What more can you ask for? Before we give our picks for today, uh, Ed, I noticed that uh, they they might just have a problem with tires for this Dover race tomorrow. Uh, they're starting a cord after twenty laps. Yeah, this tire wear is pretty pretty hefty here, so it's uh, going to have to be careful. I don't think I have enough time. They have what, nine sets? And if they court after 20 laps, that's not enough to complete the full race. So people are going to have to drive on eggshells for a while, I guess. What do you yeah, know? I heard something, heard something yesterday with Kyle Busch because the practice session was the first time on the track for the week, and he said they were only getting so many laps on there, and they were hoping with the rubber from the Arca race and the Xfinity race that when the cup race went on there, that would – kind of quell some of that issue but now that we've had all this rain last night and all day today and then running tomorrow it's going to be a green track so that's going to definitely be an issue goodyear's going to have to bring a couple more truckloads of tires yeah it seems like they're running the same tires as last year all right uh gentlemen last week we didn't get ed's pick because ed wasn't with us and uh, thank goodness he is today so ed i'm going to let you have first round draft choice today for picking well i don't know it's a tough one i'll take kyle bush all right uh, by the way kyle Come to paul yeah, our winner last week at Talladega. Okay. Uh, Dan? I'm going to go with Kyle Larson. Starting a little bit deep in the field, but Dover seems to suit him right. All right. Brian? 
Chase Elliott's going to punch his ticket to the playoffs. Now, he needs one. He's really good here. This is where he almost got his first win. I think Chase Elliott will win. He's good on Mondays. He won last year on a Monday there. And don't forget how good that Hendrick is at Dover, too. It's just that uh, Jimmy Johnson would win left and right. I'll tell you two things to keep an eye on. Josh Berry is going to be good here. Believe it or not, I know he's a, a guest driver in the 48 car, but I have a funny feeling he's going to play into this one. But uh, but believe it or not, I'm going to take Brad Keselowski for the win. He was fastest in happy hour. He's knocking on the door. He took that whole operation on, and he's turning it around, and he's getting ready to win, and this is where he's going to do it. Every one of us took someone with a single-digit number. <laughs> That's right. You won the race. Why the long face, Brad? Uh, that's the way it goes. Uh, yep. That very deal. Where do you think he'll go? If he's got a cup ride lined up for 24. I wonder where it would be. Yeah. Larry Mack seems to think that, uh, Josh Berry has picked up a ride for next year. Well, there's a couple of prolific rides that may be out there. Uh, both of them, it appears the four and the 10 car for, uh, Stuart Haas racing. It seems like to me, that'd right? Be a good fit for that four car. I really do. Hmm. I mean, or it could be a new team. Maybe, maybe. Some people are speculating Junior Motorsports gets the charter, you know, who knows? Or Colleague Motorsports, the Chevy team. Colleague has guys, none of them really, I don't think it's going to be extended for both Alma uh, Nigger and, uh, <clears throat> and their other driver out there, so maybe Colleague would be a place to go. Uh, I, you know, it's interesting, but I don't see him in that four for one reason or another. Why? I don't know. Uh, but I agree, he would be pretty good in there. Uh, is that 10 car coming back again next year? I thought it was a, another one-year deal. Is he back two years? Yes, he's got two years. Al- Al- Almarola has a two-year deal. Okay, so he's back one more year. Yeah, then maybe the four car. The four car is the one that uh, is the most obvious that they are looking for a full-time driver. Would Larry Mack have any kind of uh, insight on that? Well, we're going to find out. Keep their sponsor, too. You know, Anheuser-Busch is up. They've been talking... Rumored to be talking to the track house team and with Chastain. I just, you know, if they can find a driver that is kind of like Harvick as far as maybe old school and stuff, and that's kind of what Barry is, isn't he? He kind of came up the way they used to come up in the sport. Yeah, no kidding. He's a throwback kind of a guy. Speaking of track house, uh, the owner of track house, that rapper dude, what's his name? Uh, uh, Pitbull. Pitbull. His new album is called Track House. <laughs> Eh, where'd you come up with that one? Good one. They had a tire test this week at New Hampshire. Every manufacturer handpicked the driver they wanted to do the test for them. Ford took Brad Keselowski, Toyota took Bell, and Chevrolet took Elliott. Interesting. And were you aware that Bell is the point leader? I don't know if anybody even watches that stuff anymore. How important is it to be the point leader? We have enough winners where we don't even have to worry about going back on the points, it seems like. Although not as many this year. Have you guys noticed that? Things a little different. Yeah, last year they had all kinds of winners. This year it's still got enough, but not not anything like a year ago. Um, C. Bell will start outside of the front row today, by the way. Or, t- excuse me, tomorrow at the uh, Dover race. And so that uh, that that's going to be an interesting front row with Kyle Bush and uh, and C. Bell, your front row tomorrow. And uh, it gets underway, by the way, at 11 o'clock. Once again, it's on FS1. And you can get it on the uh, Big 920 website, Twitter page, and Facebook page tomorrow. Don't forget, next week, we got a pretty stacked field coming to Madison for that Joe Shear race. Yeah, some pretty big names there. Uh, uh, Brian, what, did you? Oh, yes. Yeah, Jacob Gomes from California is coming out here. Casey Roderick will be here. Johnny Sauter is on the list. Uh, Ty Majeski. Derek Krause, Dan Fredrickson's making an appearance. Yeah, hell of a race. Kyle Krause. Fenhouse coming back. Yeah, Fenhouse is on there. There's 38 cars entered right now if you take a look wow. at the after this. So oh. if all things go right, Dan and I will be there next week. All right. Maybe I'll join you. Hey, thanks so much for making us a part of your Sunday morning. We appreciate it. It's what uh, keeps us on the air, and uh, we love you for it. Don't forget, you can get the download anywhere you download your podcast. You can get us. And remember, real race cars have doors. Even if they do climb in through the windows. Let's Talk NASCAR is produced and directed by Dangerous Dan Margetta. Our in-house engineer, website coordinator, and king of the knobs is Matt Losey Sr. For all of us 
Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next week, everybody. This program, this program has come to you live from multiple locations via Skype. Any and all comments expressed on this show do not necessarily express the opinions of this station, its employees, or advertisers. Your comments are always welcome at mail at ltnradionetwork.com. Find us at facebook.com slash network. And thank you for your support since 1985. Tune in again next Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time for the LTN Hour on the LTN Radio Network.